to say that Ronan Michael joins us in studio. If you don't know who Ronan Michael is, you're probably going to get to know him a bit more over the next couple of years. He is Ireland's newest rugby league player, newest professional rugby league player, I think it's fair to say. Huddersfield Giants have just signed him on a one-year academy contract, and I'm absolutely delighted to say he joins me in the studio now. Ronan, you're very welcome. Oh, thanks, Will. I'm delighted to be here. Absolutely amazing. So you're part of the Huddersfield Giants setup now. Uh, it's a one-year academy contract, and initially when you see that, it's like this guy's been playing rugby league and rugby league only all his life. That's not the case. No, not at all. No, I'm playing rugby league less than two years at this right. stage. Uh, I only started at the beginning of 2017, and now I'm sitting here in the studio <laughs> absolutely amazed. How did it happen so quickly? Um, I had to take a break from rugby union, and then I, we were looking for other opportunities, other sports to be playing, sevens, and obviously you've seen maybe rugby league on the TV, I don't know, the NRL or whatever, but... Never really heard about it in Ireland, so then I just came across Rugby League Ireland and I just got involved and started playing and then played two games against Wales last year with Ireland under 17s versus Wales under 16s and I got seen there and headed over to Huddersfield for a week in February with a few other lads and then got the opportunity to come back on trial in July. So that was February this year and July this year? Yeah, yeah. And in between that, it was your leaving cert? It was my leaving cert indeed. Pretty busy year for you, pretty successful 2018 for you, I dare say. Oh, well, yeah, so far it's been great and hopefully you can t continue on the success with the next few weeks with the Ireland seniors in the European Championships. Talk to us about that period when you're doing the Leaving Cert, when you're preparing for a trial for what becomes your first professional contract in sport and you've got the heads in the books. It must have been uh, a fairly busy time, let's say. Oh, yeah, we were flat out during that time. I suppose I, I was focusing on the Leaving Cert after I went for the first week in February. I kind of uh, put it to the back of my mind. I was like, right, heads down for the Leaving Cert. But then, luckily enough, I got offered to come back to Huddersfield just after the Leaving Cert. So um, during, during the time of the Leaving Cert, I was training away just with the Longhorns in Ireland up in Ashburn and uh, playing with their senior team, playing rugby league there and just keeping the head in the books at the same time. Using rugby league as kind of a way to get away from the Leaving Cert, a way to de-stress and just giving me something al alternative to focus on. Yeah, and it was out of necessity really like alternatively if you were playing sport as just a hobby because uh, this isn't just a hobby this is now your career uh, probably so uh, people who are doing the leaving cert often just drop the sport it's like let me just focus on the books for six months which doesn't necessarily need to lead to a huge improvement in results in actual fact it can go the opposite way I think uh, you were speaking just before we came on air there just about a healthy mindset that just being active and like that necessity to be active during the leaving cert really helps uh, oh of course yeah I suppose I used playing sport as just a way to de-stress and just detach from the exams because you, that's all you hear during school and after school you're thinking about studying and you're thinking about exams so when I was playing sport I was focusing on something else because I knew before my leaving cert happened that I was going to be going back over to Huddersfield on a trial so while I was doing my exams I was focused on my exams but then I had a way of something else to focus on so the exams weren't the be all and end all and in the end, that worked out better for me. That made my exams actually go better because it, I would, didn't have just one pathway, one direct route. I had another thing coming down the line and obviously I didn't know what would happen, but it was a way of de-stressing and taking my mind off the exams and having something else going on for me. How easy have you found the transition into rugby league from rugby union? Oh, well, I, I found personally that I didn't think it was too bad because I played back row in rugby union, eight or seven or... Now maybe more of a six, but uh, I, I didn't like I wasn't a prop forward or a second row, which are very specific positions in sure. rugby union. They have specific roles. I was kind of more more of a an all round player, and then transition into rugby league. Although it's a very different sport, you have the basic basic skills from rugby union, and with an open mindset and going into the sport saying, okay, I played rugby union, I was a decent rugby union player, but I'm going into a new sport now, and you have to you have to go in with an open mindset and believe that, okay, I'm going to have to learn this from the start, from the basics. It might seem simple. Like I remember my first three rugby league training sessions was literally just learning how to play the ball right. and just learning how to get my footwork right. And I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is dragging on, isn't it? But <laughs> then you realise going in that these are the most important skills that you can know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like you mentioned there, picking up the basic skills. So for your entire rugby league playing career so far... 
you've been in a learning mindset and I'm sure that helps going into your first professional setting. So any other person who goes into their first professional setting, uh, they've been in their learning mindset from say the ages of six to 10 or whatever it may be when they're learning the basics of their sport and then they grow out of that learning mindset to a certain extent. They develop an ego uh, in other extents, particularly if you're wildly successful. For you, I guess you would naturally, you'd be quite naturally humble, I think. And also you've had to maintain that learning mindset because this is still quite a new sport for you, which is all keeping you quite grounded, I think. Yeah, that's the thing, I suppose. Like playing with Ireland last year, you, you kind of you kind of think like, oh, wow, this is great, isn't it? I'm putting on the jersey. I've only been playing a couple of months. I'm already playing for Ireland. And then you realise, OK, wait, you have to take it a humble play. You have to step back a bit when you go into a more professional environment like Huddersfield or... When I'm going to go in with the seniors, you have to be like, okay, these players have been playing longer than me. They played the sport since a young age, since they're this high. And then you're going to actually go into this environment and try take as much information as you can. You literally have to eat up information and just stay attent and listening at all times to what your coaches have to say. Is it fair to say then that they see you as somebody in Huddersfield who they can mould into an outstanding player, that they see not only your current set of skills, but your mindset as you kind of illuminated upon just there, your ability and your hunger to learn more and more? Yeah, well, I suppose going over there on trial, I had to stay open-minded and bring the right attitude because it would have been all good if I was a decent enough player, an all right player, but if I went into that, that experience and that setup and just went in with, with an ego and went in thinking that I knew it all and didn't actually try learn from the people who are better players than me and know more than me, then they would have been like, OK, this lad's a, right, a decent player, but he has the wrong attitude. He's not trying to learn. So I literally had to go in there and just start a fresh slate and just try taking everything that I could. And even if the trial didn't work out, luckily for me it did, and I did get a one-year contract. But even if it didn't, I had to try take as much information back to Ireland and say, OK, this is how they play the game over in England, and this is what we can learn from how they play the game. You talk about open-mindedness there, and you talk about taking information from one place to another, and the cross-pollination of different sports is quite fascinating with you, because you picked up jiu-jitsu with regard to furthering your rugby league performance. Yeah, well, uh, just there last year in 2017, I'd been to about one or two rugby league training sessions with uh, Casey Dunn, Tony Dale, Wayne Kerr, um, who has Paul Varga and Paul Cullen. They were all around there. Uh, with the under-17s with Ireland, and I strolled in to just take up jiu-jitsu, a few of my mates were going, so I said, all right, I'll give this a go, and Casey's lying there, and I'm a bit confused, I'm like, this lad's a rugby league, this lad's a rugby <laughs> league player, what's he doing doing jiu-jitsu? And then, later on, I came to realise that, actually, these skills come across, you know, you need to know how to wrestle to play rugby league, and then, I learned that my Gaelic footballing skills, because I played Gaelic football with Old Warriors and Balbriggan, and, and that's coming in as well, and my rugby union skills are coming in, and all these different things I've learned, they're actually all coming into this sport, you know, and I bring different things across. Like likewise, when I've been back over playing Gaelic football, this time around during my off-season where Old Warriors, when I've been training with them, I'm taking in rugby league skills that I've learned and bringing it to... What sort of skills are you, would you be bringing into playing with Old Warriors from rugby league? Well, I think that being over in England, like, I've learned, like, I have to be fit. and <laughs> I, I have to be a lot quicker with what I do and my hands have gotten a lot quicker because I'm playing in that environment where... You have to get things right, you know. It's a, it's not not it's not that it's under pressure, but you want to do things right. You want to impress, you know what I mean. And then you notice you're dropping less ball. You're quicker. You're more mobile. And that's one of the major things I've learned playing rugby league. I'm more mobile than I was, and the, the, the coming across from different sports actually helps because you have to every time you come across a different sport, you have to be like, okay, people know more than me in this environment. You need to take a step back. You need to just sit back and listen and learn. And I suppose that rugby union can come across as well. It strikes me that rugby league is one of the best sports in the world for that cross-pollination of different sports. We can see uh, a bit of you on screen there, by the way, for, for anybody watching us, that you look at some very specific examples, like Sam Burgess is a classic example. Like, I wonder, does he kind of sum up the attitude of rugby league where it's like they take the best parts from other sports and there's no sort of snobbery about the idea that you had to be a league player all your life to succeed in league. Now, granted, Sam Burgess was league pretty much all his life, went to union and came back, and here's Ben Teo as well. Like, you, you know what I'm trying to say here, that there is sort of an open sort of coming and going with, with rugby league. I think particularly in Ireland as well, where I guess numbers aren't as big as rugby league would like it to be. And therefore, if you've played union, you'd, you'd be welcome to open arms. There is no snobbery, as I say, and it's a benefit for everybody. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that like there's so many great rugby union players in Ireland and so much potential Gaelic football as well. And coming into rugby league, like 
we'd welcome you with open arms. I know all the lads at the Longhorns and all the other clubs, amateur clubs in Ireland, the Galway Tribesmen, Waterford Vikings, Dublin City Exiles, all the clubs up north. They'd all love players just coming in saying, listen, I want to give this sport a go, I want to learn. That's all, that's all the attitude you need to take and people will take you in. And it is, although it is a different sport, you will pick it up and you will learn. And the lads, like, well, obviously at my amateur club with the long ones, they just took me in, they took me under the wing and they were just like, right, we'll have a bit of crack and you'll learn the sport and you'll get out playing more. And that was, that was what it was all about, just getting around with the lads. And then I was playing with Ireland as well and all the lads in Ireland just... We all just get around each other and just it's just a good sport and I think that the rugby union players can come across as well. Yeah, you are building out the national anthem. Uh, you'll be doing it for the for the senior soon. You're involved uh, with the, the squad for the European Championships playing this Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, I, I was named in the 35 and I've got news. I, uh, I'm named in the 20-man squad coming up for the Ireland-Scotland game. So it's all it's been surreal just how little I've... Or how... Not little, how uh, short I've been playing the game and getting named in the senior squad. It's just been amazing. And then getting to play... Uh, for Ireland and Serbia as well with the under-19s in European Championships. That was all just a great experience of understanding how to work in a team in an environment when you're on camp and you're getting around the lads. And you learn a lot from that as on and off the pitch. You learn about your how you should behave around like different players who you're learning more from and lads who know more than you. And then you learn about on the pitch, right, when you're wearing that jersey, you're belting out the anthem, it's your family, your friends, you're all in, you know, you're all in for each other. If one's in, we're all in. How do you find the senior setups? Like obviously with Ireland for kind of a, a short enough period now, you've been obviously in with the seniors for, for Huddersfield over the course of the summer and you will of course over the next year. Uh, have they taken you under their wing? Are you seen as kind of like uh, the, their, their protege in both uh, camps? A oh, protege I suppose. I, I don't know if that's the right <laughs> term for me. I don't know about that. But um, yeah, well with, with the senior domestics, uh, we've been out with them the last three weeks uh, just getting involved with the seniors and when I've been with uh, Huddersfield first team as well, just for team runs and that, just helping out with numbers, they've all just taken me in, you know, the Irish lad. It's a bit of crack being being over there. I speak a bit funny to them, you know, and <laughs> they speak funny to me, but it's all just good-hearted banter, you know. And when, when I'm in with them, they'll be like, right, when we're training, we're serious, you know. But then they'll take me out, and if, if I'm doing something, they can be like, all right, Ronan, just pick up on this or whatever, and then we'll go back in. It's no, no hard feelings with it, you know. They, they know more than me, and I understand that, so they'll they'll help me out, you know, and that'll be it. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like maybe like your enthusiasm about uh, rugby league is, is infectious. It sounds like Irish rugby league is in a position to grow quite substantially with the right backing and uh, with the right resources and with the right people in charge over the next couple of years. It's in, a, in quite a good place. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm happy to say that I'm, I'm looking to be like a, a stepping stone for people. I want to create that path showing that yeah, there actually is something that can, can come up if you're playing well with Irish Rugby League. And it's just been, it's unfortunate that less people aren't getting involved, you know. And the more, if we got more numbers and more people saying, OK, I'll give this a go, coming across from Union, coming across from Gaelic football, next thing you know, we'd have, we'd have a proper setup, and it would be on the news, it would be on the telly, and there would be people saying, OK, Rugby League Ireland, what's this all about? Let's get involved. Good crack, good fun, good sport. Well, I'm sure more people are going to be paying closer attention to to rugby league over in uh, over in the UK next year. Obviously, it's on t television all the time over here, and I don't think we pay enough attention to it. But you're providing us with a decent enough excuse to get behind Huddersfield Giants la uh, next year. Just one last question: It seems like a, a weird question to ask anybody who's just signed their first contract in a professional sport. But between rugby league, between rugby union, between GEA, between jiu jitsu. You've got a, a platform, a suite of different sports that you've kind of partook in, in in the last year or so. Is rugby league going to be your career now and that's where you'll finish as a professional sportsman? Well, I, I dream of it. I'd love to play in the Super League, keep playing with Ireland, represent my country and be that person, be that person who says, this is the lad, he's the lad, he's one of the first lads who ever made it over there, over across the pond. I'd say that would be a, a dream, but... That's not to say that I don't like rugby union or I don't like Gaelic football anymore because I think that there's skills from every single one of those sports that you can take back to each other. And I just think that the way rugby league has worked out over the short period of time I've been playing it, it's just kind of snowballed for me. Like it's just one thing led to another. And you, you, sometimes you just have to take it, just grab it with both hands and just go for it because mm. you, sometimes, you know, it's just destiny or whatever you may say about it. But um, 
I, uh, two years ago, I'd nearly never heard of Rugby League Ireland, and then now I'm sitting here in the studio just over the moon with everything. It's all happened so quick, and I've just been like, you just have to take it, you just have to go for it while you have the chance. And if things don't work out, you know, you can say, right, I'd rather me say, oh, I wasn't good enough, I gave it a good shot, rather than to say, I wonder if this or that happened. Yeah, it's a very good attitude to have. It's uh, Ireland against Scotland this Saturday in the European Championships. There is World Cup places on the line throughout the European Championships, so it's high-stakes stuff, the World Cup, of course, uh, in 2021. But Ronan Michael, uh, he's your new Huddersfield Giants player with a one-year academy contract. Keep an eye out for him. Ronan Michael, thank you so much. Thanks, for calling man. In. It's been a great time.